it's been a while since we checked in on Hobie. Let's see what the Taco Bell is going on with him. By the way, if you squint, you might catch some subtle product placement during this skating montage. And I don't know what this extra is doing, but I'm intrigued. So Mitch is going on a 24-hour shift, which means he won't be able to watch Hobie, because as we all know, Mitch is constantly supervising him and not forgetting he exists. Instead of staying at a friend's house, the Hobster convinces him to let him spend the night alone. A perfect angel. Okay, but you better not invite any dogs over. Sup, testicles? Stephanie is going to be Mitch's partner over this 24-hour shift, giving them an opportunity to discuss the events of Mitch and Gail's failed wedding and perhaps kickstart their own on-again, off-again relationship. Tough break with Pale, huh, Mitch? Her name's Gail. Actually, Pale is a derivative of Pagale, which is the long form of Gail. If you are aware of anything about names, you'd know that. Meanwhile, an old man is having a heart attack on the beach. No-name lifeguard to the rescue! Actually, his name is John. If you were a real Baywatch fan, you'd know that. At least I think this is John. They call him John on the radio, but he kind of looks like the guy credited as Ron, so who knows? He's like a weird phantom that drifts between the world of speaking extra and no-name background guy. I know he says some lines, but he doesn't call for backup and someone else does it for him. And half the time he acts like he's mute. It's like they're paying him by the word. What the hell? He's not a main character! Move it, crowd! Why didn't John slash Ron get his own first aid kit and try to help? Is there a reason he did nothing and waited for the main characters to show up? Well, he's a dead man, let's pack it up! And I'm sorry for making fun of Sid in Season 1, because somehow they found a worse guy to man the telephones. No change in the victim's condition. He's still on the critical list. I'll keep you posted of any new developments. How was Baywatch's peak popularity during a time when they absolutely cut as many corners as possible? More interesting than this non-exciting rescue, one of the guest stars this week is a young Charisma Carpenter. If you work hard and persevere, one day you can become a famous singer-slash-actor like myself! While Hobie tries his hand at another still young but getting progressively less creepy romance, Melvin from Tremors has dipped his hand into illegal hang gliding. The little turd. Okay, there was no need to pull a new me for this one, guys. He's just being extra. And if he hadn't been swimming in slow motion, he would have caught the two kids taking off with the hang glider. A rare new me failure. Filling in time montage! Featuring guy spinning in circles, Stephanie checking out bikini women, judgmental woman on phone, scary bearded men, Mitch reacting to nothing, fire nipple man, Stephanie being shocked at a random woman on the beach for no reason, the return of this scary clown footage, and baby ass. You might think this is an average bike accident, but you're wrong, because it has the fallout equivalent to a war zone. I can't move my legs! Ow! Oh, yeah. We will always remember where we were when the Malibu bike accident of 1994 occurred. Many died, but they live on in our hearts forever. Hey, this guy stole Gardner's Shoot Hoops Not Drug shirt. I'm glad he's dead. Meanwhile, Hobie Montage! <laughs> hey, check it out. He's doing the Karate Kid. Brain on, brain off. Also, he either A, stole this kite from this kid, or B, randomly gave it away. It's unclear. So anyway, Hobie decides to invite some people over to his house, and things quickly get out of hand. My dad's gonna kill me! Hey Mitch, remember how we hinted at the beginning of this episode that this plot was going to involve a relationship or something? Uh, who can remember at this point? Hey, Hobster, how's it going at home? It's all going fine, Dad. That's no dogs I hear in the background, is it? Oh, uh, no, Dad, I'm just smoking weed alone. Oh, oh, good. For a second there, I was worried. Have fun, champ. Things escalate a bit when Melvin decides to cause more trouble. <gasps> He's wasting a chill. The monster. I think it's great the way you trust him. If you want, I can give you some more parenting tips, Mitch. Whoa, my. They do eventually start talking about Mitch and Gail, and Mitch says he should have listened to her and not been so impulsive. You were right. <laughs> As usual. Okay, who replaced Mitch with an identical robot that actually admits defeat to Stephanie? He does, however, admit that getting together with Stephanie so quickly after his first marriage to Gail was a mistake, and suddenly the episode becomes a clip show. You were married at the time. 
Looks like this week I'm getting the lady. Hobie cleans up the house and appears to have committed the perfect crime until he realizes Mitch's hang glider has been stolen. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Meanwhile, more relationship stuff. I mean, we just gotta be able to keep our personal and our professional lives separate. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> Take that, Hobie. <laughs> what was that? Look at this, Stephanie looks like a ghost. <laughs> like that had ever happened. Don't do it! You'll never catch me. With this hang glider, I'll completely disappear. Not if I hang off of you like an idiot. <laughs> Exactly as planned. I should have known this was going to happen. Stephanie, get the Hobie 3 clone tube ready. How did you and my hang glider wind up on the side of a cliff? It's kind of a long story. Naturally. I guess it all started with this girl. Her name's Wendy. You wanted to impress her? Yeah, sorta. Next time, buy her a box of candy. Whoa, what a payoff. You idiot. Next time on Baywatch, more Logan and Caroline nonsense. Meanwhile, one of Hobie's friends is embarrassed of his little person father. Daddy issues. I believe this is the moment.